Hello everybody, Andrew Majeski here with Dental L. So another recap, if you are curious about my Dental L mobile hygiene business and how everything is going. So I officially started, it's been, I guess a month now. Um, I've been seeing patients for 14 years, so a long, long time, but my official business about a month Again, officially, you know, I got the ball rolling a couple months ago. I started seeing patients here and there, but I did um, have like a grand opening, even though I go to people's homes. So I don't have a physical location where I do see people, but I wanted to have a grand opening so that I would always remember, okay, this is when I did start the business. So officially, it's been about a month now. And it's amazing. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. It's just so nice to be able to do things my way. Um, and I'm gonna be completely honest here. So typically in the dental office, as I'm sure with any occupation, you are told you know, what to do, how to talk, what to charge, um, you know, which there's nothing wrong with that, but you do have to follow their mission statement. You know, you have to do things for them as a team, you know, all of that. But, and I'm not saying that I don't like that, but every office that I've been in, there was just always something that I didn't quite agree with. Not in a bad way, you don't have to agree, um, agree with everything, but you know, charging was a big thing. You know, a lot of the times, at least the offices where I've been in, it was about, okay, so make sure to charge a, um, a recall exam, a polish, you have to make sure to, um, to build this much cleaning time, even if you only see them for half an hour, you need to build about 40 minutes, you know, because um, as a dental hygienist, you charge according to how much time you spend on that patient. So even if you're seeing a patient for one, um, for one hour, if I only clean the teeth for 45 minutes, but I spent about 15 minutes, you know, talking to them, um, taking x-rays, waiting for a checkup, that didn't matter in a lot of offices. You still had to charge for that full hour. And I would go back and say to them, well, I didn't clean the teeth for that full hour. So I can't write in the chart legally that I did. I don't want to charge the patient that much because their insurance doesn't cover it. Even if it does, cover it 100%. I didn't want to charge the patient that much because I didn't do it. Plain and simple, but you know, you don't want to step on anybody's toes. You don't want to be known as that hygienist who is always, you know, arguing with the front desk to change the codes, this and this. And I didn't want to appear as if I knew better than them. Um, but I did. I used to work as a dental receptionist when I first started. I was a dental assistant. I became a hygienist, of, um, of course. I became a restorative hygienist also. So I do have an advanced um, certificate for that, which not a lot of people have. I did that about four years ago. So I've done a little bit of everything. I have worked with insurance companies. So I felt that it was a good time for me to start my own business. And it's nice, you guys. I can charge based on what I do. I don't have to always be thinking, okay, so the front desk wants me to charge this and this and this. My appointment with this patient is an hour long, but their grandmother just passed away. So I would like to spend the extra 20 minutes talking to them, but the front desk doesn't let me do that because then I do have to charge for that time. You know, like that's what, what would happen a lot of the time is, oh, um, Andrea, how come it took you 20 minutes past their appointment time? You have to charge for that. I would say to them, oh, well, me and the patient were just talking or, you know, her mom passed away. So she was having a tough time. I have known this patient for 10 years. I'm not going to cut their appointment short because I have a patient waiting, you know, or, or, you know, these things happen. And then that patient who's waiting gets mad at me for, for being 20 minutes behind when I would say to them, you know what, I apologize, but my previous patient, um, took longer, you know, I'm not allowed to say her mom just passed away, I spent the time talking to her because you're not allowed to say things like that to another patient. So I would have to be as vague as possible, but then that patient who, who, who had to be kept waiting would say to me, oh, well, I have things to do, it took you 20 minutes. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. But the nice thing about working for, for myself is I take my time. 
if you need that extra time, I take that time. I do not book patients back to back because even if I did, I couldn't because with like travel time, I just don't know per se when I'm going to be there. So I do not book patients back to back. I see about three patients a day at the most um, because I do have to go from place to place. If I'm in one spot, like such as a nursing home in an, um, in an office, then I'll book about six patients a day because I'm in the one spot and I don't have to move, you know, here, there, there, and there. But I love it. It's so nice to be able to do my own thing, say what I want to say, not to pressure patients to book treatment, you know, certain um, treatments that it's not that they don't need it, but do they need it now? No. Um, to not, you know, like that's a huge thing for me is, is that I don't feel as if I have to pressure patients to spend a certain amount because their insurance covers it. And the nice thing too is that if a if a patient needs, you know, evenings, weekends, if you go to a dental office, they're booked up like three months usually in advance. Well, I can see people probably as soon as three days away because I seem to book about three days prior. So if you need, you know, evenings, weekends, that's okay. If you need me to see you, your husband, you know, three kids in like two days, no problem. So I don't mind evenings, weekends, that's what I'm here for. And I come to them. So people love that people love it so much. Um, and that's kind of the thing that I like the most too, is I know that they're happy, you know, after I see, a, um, <clears throat> after I see a patient, they always say to me like, wow, that was the most relaxing thing ever. Like that was so nice to not have to feel like we have to hurry, hurry, hurry because you have a patient waiting. It's nice to be able to ask the questions for you to take the time to, you know, talk to me. When I have questions about how to brush, you actually show me, you know, so patients love it. Um, but if you're watching this and thinking about opening up your own practice, I would not suggest doing it unless you have experience, because if you're a newbie, there's so much to learn. Trust me, if you if you open up your own practice right away, you you kind of haven't learned what you have to learn first, like how to sterilize properly, how to time management, you know, how to work with team members, like all of that. But if you have a lot of experience and you were like me, who was getting sick and tired of the politics in other offices, and you want to start your own thing to see patients your way, this is amazing. So I hope this helped to just kind of give you guys a recap. If you guys have questions, let me know. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.